information and PDF. I'm sure we've all seen a few movies where robots have become smarter than humans and threatened humanity. So what will the future look like for PDF and robots? Will we have a robo PDF apocalypse or an automated PDF utopia? The answer to this and much more coming up now. Robotic process automation uses software robots to mimic human actions and automate everyday tasks. This session will explain the pace that PDF plays in the range of automation solutions that may be classified as robotic process automation and how RPA fits into the wider spectrum of automation. Use cases will be discussed and we will give a demonstration of RPA. Particular mention will be given to PDF-centric issues that need to be considered for successful RPA implementations. It's helpful to think of a spectrum of automation to enable us to distinguish between simple RPA automation and other much more complex methods. We will explain and differentiate between robotic process automation, intelligent automation, cognitive intelligence and artificial intelligence. Robotic process automation mimics human actions with computer systems and is used for rules-based processes. The benefits of RPA are an increase in the speed and volumes of processing whilst reducing errors and without any need to change existing computer systems. RPA is most suitable for high volume routine entry tasks that don't require complex decision making and particularly those that can be prone to human error. Most commonly this will involve legacy systems that don't have convenient automation APIs. So specific examples might include tasks such as new hire onboarding, payroll, invoice processing, CRM data entry, vendor onboarding, or any of the other tasks in this list, and many more routine processes. By contrast, intelligent automation is based on machine learning. It's smarter and can incorporate judgments, such as viewing and interpreting an MRI scan, as shown here. Furthermore, cognitive intelligence can imitate human processes by combining natural language processing and image recognition to augment human intelligence, rather like an intelligent assistant. True artificial intelligence can mimic not just human actions but human intelligence, and ultimately an AI entity may become indistinguishable from a human being or even superior to a human being. Hopefully it is clear that robotic process automation is at the simpler end of the automation spectrum and whilst we probably won't have to worry about a robo PDF apocalypse just yet, we may need to look at what we need to do to create an automated PDF utopia. So now we'll move on to a practical demonstration of RPA and PDF. For this we will be using Microsoft's Power Automate, but of course many other platforms are available such as Automation Anywhere, Blue Prism and UiPath. For our demonstration, we will use an example of asset registration, where a simple PDF document contains details of the asset to be registered, and this data needs to be entered into an application. Here we happen to be using Microsoft Access. And we want to demonstrate RPA manipulating in a Windows application, so even though Access has got APIs that we could possibly use, what we're actually going to do here is create a UI flow template that can be automated by RPA. And later on, we'll also provide a similar example that does use an API. The automated workflow outline can be seen here and the steps are as follows. Step 1. The workflow is triggered when a new file is created in a specific location. This will be the new asset PDF file. Step 2. Get the data from the PDF. Step 3. Run an RPA step to use the data and add it to the application. The PDF is not a form and doesn't have any XMP or attached metadata, so to get the data, we need to analyze the document to derive the values for the name value pairs, such as price and the uh, asset amount. Here we're using the Aquaforest PDF connector, which does this work for us and allows us to use the resulting values in the next steps of the workflow. The next step is then send the data to the UI flow which is the actual step that automates the, a the application, and we will see this shortly. 
Here we are automating Microsoft Access via a series of interface actions such as key depressions and mouse moves. And we'll show how this is set up by recording a session using sample data that is then used to create the UI flow. Here we are using the UI flow recorder. This allows us to record a session with an application to create the template series of actions. And as you can see, we're going through the process here of creating a new asset using the recording tool and using the sample data. When the flow is run later, it will make use of the real data that's been extracted from the PDF document. That's now complete, and here, here we'll show the example of it actually running. We have our newly completed asset registration document, and the flow is triggered when the document is added to the source folder. The data is quickly extracted from the file, as we can see here, and the UI flow step can now run using the real data, and this is all happening automatically without any human interaction. So what we're seeing on the screen here is the actual robotic process automation. So what's happening is it's essentially using the template that we created earlier and applying the new values to actually create that new uh, new, new record. And we can see here the user interface has, flow has finished and we can go back into Access to check ourselves to make sure that the item that we just added really is there, which it is. I would now like to show a slightly different use case. Here we want to automatically update an Excel spreadsheet when a new PDF asset registration document is submitted by email. So this time our automation is triggered when a new email arrives and we process the attachment. Here are the details of the email trigger step which shows the filters so that it only triggers when the email has an attachment and the subject includes the word asset. We then get the data from the PDF as we did last time. And finally, we add a new row to the spreadsheet using the extracted data. This time we're using a, a built-in piece of functionality inside Power Automate to manipulate Excel files. So it's possible to generate various automated PDF workflows without requiring any code at all using a low-code, no-code platform such as Power Automate or any of the other platforms that we've actually, we've actually been looking at. As we have seen, data is central to RPA processing and very often that data is locked away in PDF documents. There will also, of course, be many cases where we need to automatically generate PDF documents containing data, but to do this is relatively straightforward. Our key challenge is to be able to reliably extract and process a variety of structured and unstructured data from PDF files. There are a number of possible approaches to storing data in PDF, some of which would make it much easier than others to extract the required data. In many cases, of course, we may not be in a position to have any say in how the PDF is created, so we may have to rely on trying to extract relevant data from the PDF by text or visual layout or other means. But if we do have a choice, we should aim for robot-readable PDF with XMP metadata or embedded data files. PDF forms and tag PDF are also useful options. If we need to extract data from PDF text rather than XMP or a data file attachment, then there are a number of well-known issues that can cause difficulties, and we're going to look at a few of these now. The first issue is really determining, well, which pieces of text do we even want to grab from the PDF file? Even if we can correctly extract all the text, we still have the challenge of determining this and determining which values we actually need. 
Now, if our processing is based on fixed templates where the format doesn't change, um, that's probably fairly straightforward. But if we have to deal with a very large number of different formats that can change over time, then extracting values such as perhaps the tax total for this example can be a bit more challenging. And of course, the robot readable Zugvert model is designed specifically to resolve this issue, particularly for the uh, invoice use case. A common example of something in, in the PDF construction that can actually cause problems is restrictive document permissions. And these are usually intended to ensure that content cannot be copied and extracted, which therefore gives some issues. But as the dialogue message su suggests, there may be ways around this. Dialogue, all Adobe products enforce the restrictions set by the permissions password. However, not all third party products do. So these settings we've got about content copying and extraction may not necessarily be uh, applied, but they certainly will be in, so in some cases. So that's one thing to consider. Another common issue is image PDFs. These don't contain any text and an optical character recognition process needs to be run in order to extract the text. This of course introduces the possibility of OCR errors and getting incorrect data through this method. Image PDF files that have even a small amount of regular text are enough to confuse many pieces of software, especially if they just check the PDF pages, have a look to see whether there's is there any text at all on this page, uh, and if there isn't, don't use optical character recognition. So on this example here, perhaps the uh, text at the top of the page was real text and the rest of it was just an image. Um, so not being processed correctly can lead to missing data in this example as well. Custom font encoding is sometimes used to deliberately prevent reuse of the text material, or maybe for other reasons, such as in this example here. And this provides some additional challenges in extracting the text. Vector PDFs produced from tools such as AutoCAD are purely vectors, so despite appearances, there's actually no text and no images in this particular file we're looking at here. It would be possible to process such files though by rasterizing them and OCRing the PDF. As we have seen, there are a number of issues which can make data extraction via text from PDFs difficult. The ideal solution is to use methods to make PDFs robot readable. The first example of this uh, is perhaps XMP. This has been available for quite some time now. XMP metadata which allows the embedding of XML within a PDF or other media files and this is certainly a good option and it's well supported within um, you know, many PDF tools. Arguably the best and most well proven method is making use of attached files in PDF to include XML or perhaps JSON files that, that hold the metadata. The Zugford or Factor X model for electronic invoice data is a perfect example of this approach where XML is used to hold the, hold the invoice data. And it's easy to see how this could be used in robotic process automation for extremely reliable processing. Some use cases might find find JSON the preferred format for PDF data, and of course this can be done too. Both JavaScript object notation, JSON, and XML are good language independent options for storing data in PDF as attached files. There's a couple of examples here, just so that you can get a flavor of the difference between them, but um, they can both serve the process very well. Um, JSON is just a data format really, whereas XML is a full-blown markup language. So for the purposes of simple data exchange, JSON provides a more lightweight solution but the decision of which format to use will perhaps primarily be made upon the technology stack in use by a particular organization. So what does the future hold for PDF and RPA? The ubiquity of PDF files holding key data makes PDF a natural part of the RPA pipeline. In some cases, we'll have to continue to rely on extracting PDF text, but to make the pipeline integration as smooth as possible, we need to ensure that we have truly reliable robot-readable PDFs by making use of the PDF data options that the PDF format supports. And if we can achieve that, the future will indeed be an automated PDF utopia. 
To summarise the session, we've explained how RPA fits into the spectrum of automation solutions, and we provide some demonstrations of RPA and PDF before considering the challenges that we face using PDF in an optimal manner for RPA, and most of this revolves around data in PDF files. But we demonstrated how we could achieve uh, optimal solutions with su solutions such as attached data, data files um, as a way of moving forward. Hope this has been an interesting session. We're now going to move on to providing some information about Aquaforest's PDF related software, including more details of the PDF connector that we mentioned earlier. Aquaforest has over 2,000 customers in 50 different countries. Customers are typically in government and heavily regulated industries such as legal, finance and medical, where PDF plays a critical role in business processes. Over the next few minutes, we'll give a brief overview of our three flagship products. Aquaforest Searchlight is our solution for dramatically improving the findability of PDF files on Windows, servers, Microsoft SharePoint and other environments. Aquaforest PDF Connector is a subscription-based web API that extracts data from PDFs and performs a number of other PDF operations. Autobahn DX is our server-based digital transformation product, most often used to convert large volumes of disparate file types to fully text-searchable PDF. Our PDF Connector is able to analyse PDF files and extract sets of name-value pairs without requiring machine learning, which makes it very useful in certain, certain use cases, including some RPA scenarios. This functionality is now part of the Aquaforest SDK, as well as being available as a standalone web API and a Power Automate connector. Behind the scenes, the Aquaforest PDF connector analyzes both the layout and the contents of the PDF and generates JSON with the name value pairs that can then be used by applications. Our Aquaforest Searchlight product deals with a related challenge, that of ensuring that all PDF files are fully text searchable and have useful metadata. This also relates to RPA as, where we're dealing with image PDFs, we need to ensure that text is available for data extraction. Searchlight is able to perform an audit on large sets of PDF documents and provide a report on which files are fully searchable, partially searchable or image only, as well as highlighting issues such as PDFs requiring open passwords. Once the audit has been completed, then Searchlight is able to process image PDFs and run an optical character recognition process to add a searchable text layer. Furthermore, documents can be automatically tagged according to user-defined rules, including named entities, taxonomy matching, data from fields, barcodes and text rules, and so on. Finally, our Autobahn DX product is a digital transformation product capable of processing millions of documents. It's commonly used to convert documents from a range of types, including Microsoft Office, Image and Image PDFs, into compressed, fully text searchable PDF A files. Thank you for watching this session. We hope it's proven useful and interesting. Well, thank you, Neil. Um, all right, we'd like to <clears throat> now take some questions, if you have them, for Neil. Uh, the question pod is available to you in the control panel, and uh, feel free to put them in there. Neil, do you uh, uh, you have any questions you'd like to answer at this point? Hi, hi Duff. Thanks, thanks for that. Um, yeah, one of the one of the probably this one question is um, what advice would we give for people responsible for creating PDFs um, in, in to make them as easy to use as possible when downstream in robotic process automation? Um, and we see so some of these issues we talked about in the presentation um, every day. And I realise expecting people to generate PDFs and sort of attaching data files to them. Um, it's not going to be, you know, happen all, all over all, all the time. It can't be done in every case. But I think what can be done is making sure that um, downstream software has got a reasonable chance of extracting data from your, your PDF. So the first first message is making sure there's no security restrictions. That's one of the most common things we see and that causes causes problems uh, problems for people. 
Other things are just making sure there's no sort of obfuscation, such as the uh, custom font encoding. And we, you know, where possible, um, you know, keep if you've got a digital source, there's no need to create image PDFs and hopefully just create full full text-based PDFs. Um, and just do everything you can to sort of make sure of the software, because as we all know, with um, PDFs flying around the world, you never really know what what other purposes and pieces of software are going to be consuming them um, later later on. And robotic process automation is just one one possible use.